Jason here from Theme Punch, and welcome to part one of the Slider Revolution Responsive Series. So today we're going to talk about layers grid sizes and how they relate to the slider's responsive behavior. So for this tutorial, I've gone ahead and just set up a basic slider and just one slide with a background image and also a text layer. So over in the slider settings, if we scroll down to number four, slider layout, we can see we have this layer grid size section here. I've set this to 1240 by 500. And basically what this is, is the canvas area for your slider. So if we head back over to the individual slide and we scroll down, when I say canvas area, that's this surrounding area right here. So this is 1240 pixels wide by 500 pixels tall. So the layers grid size not only defines the slide editing area here, but also influences how the slider fits on our web page. Let's head back to the slider settings and under slide layout where we had the layers grid size defined here, we also have auto selected as the slide layout. So you see there are three options here, auto, full width, and full screen. So auto means that the slider will just fit automatically into whatever content container it's placed in. So if we test this slider from the front end of my website here, we can see that it just adapts to the content container that I've placed it in. And this is actually larger than the layers grid size. So let's just take a look at this real quick. Here we have a layers grid size of 1240 and 500. And here we can see that the slider, if we just inspect this real quick, is actually 1524 pixels wide and 500 pixels tall. So why did the slider expand in width and not in height? Well, the reason why is because this number 500 here serves as the max height for the slider. So as the slider expands, it will never go past 500 pixels tall. And we can just resize the slider a bit and we can see that it remains 500 pixels tall as it expands. So if we wanted to remove this max height restriction, over in the slider settings, if you turn on the respect aspect ratio option, what this will do is it will allow the slider's height to expand past the number 500 here as the slider's width expands past the number 1240. So the slider will basically expand at this locked ratio, which is maybe about 5 by 2. And just so we can see it a little bit better, I'm going to switch the slider's layout to full width. So let's see what this looks like now. And here we can see the slider's height is taller than before. And if we just inspect it, it's about 610 pixels. And so the slider's height will continue to grow as the slider's width grows. So let's head back to our slider settings and turn respect aspect ratio off and switch back to an auto layout. And now let's see how the slider resizes as we resize the window down. And just for anyone who's curious, this special tool that I'm using here is in Firefox Tools Web Developer Responsive Design Mode. So as we resize the window down, we're going to see that the slider will start to contract once we get to a certain point. And that certain point is 1240 pixels which is exactly this number right here. So this number essentially acts as the breakpoint for when our slider starts to resize down. So anything above 1240 and the slider's width will adjust to the content container's width. The slider's height will remain the same. And then as we resize down, once it reaches below that number 1240, we'll see that the slider's height will begin to contract. So as we resize the slider down, the slider's height could actually become quite small. 
So we could apply a minimum height to the slider right next to this respect to aspect ratio option here. And let's just enter a number of 320. And now our slider's height will never go below 320 pixels tall. So let's get rid of that minimum height and let's explore how the layer's grid size directly impacts the resizing of the content. So as you may have noticed, as we resize our slider here, the caption text has also been resizing. So if we bring this back all the way up to full width, let's just take a look at what the font size is here. And if we just look in the inspector, it's 36 pixels. So let's head back to the slide editor and let's just take a look at the text size here that we've applied and you can see right up here it's also 36 pixels. So basically our text will stop resizing up when the window screen hits this 1240 number here and will start to resize down when it goes below this number 1240. So if we just resize the window here, we can see that the slider's text will remain 36 pixels until this number here hits 1240. And now as we go below 1240, you can see the slider's text is resizing down. So sticking with this concept, if we looked at the text's font size based on a percentage, 100% font size, which would be 36 pixels, what we've set here in the editor, is going to be maintained as soon as we hit 1240. And 1240, again, is our layer grid size width here. So once we get to 1240 and we start resizing up, the font size remains at 100% of whatever we've set here in the editor. And as we scroll down, then our font size will start to decrease below 100%. And this is where custom grid sizes become quite useful, as they allow us to essentially do a reset for that percentage. So let's go ahead and explore that a bit. If we head back to the slider settings, you can see all of the custom grid sizes here next to our original layer grid size. Now the way this works is these numbers up here, 1024, 778, 480. These essentially act as breakpoints. So as the window resizes to these different numbers, we can apply a custom grid size. So it's essentially very similar to CSS media queries, where you could apply certain custom CSS based on the size of a window. Where in our case here, what we're going to do is we're going to apply a custom grid size based on the size of a window. So let's just take a look at the mobile viewport here. Now if the window resize is down to 480 pixels or below, let's go ahead and apply a custom grid size of 480 by 720. And this will also do a reset for our font size there. So let's just go ahead and enable these other custom grid sizes as well. And then as we resize the window, once it reaches these different breakpoints, the font size is going to bounce back up to 100%. So for example, as our window's width hits 1024 pixels, the font size should bounce back up to 36 pixels. And same thing for this breakpoint here, which is 778 pixels and for also for the mobile view, which is 480. And these numbers here can also be changed from the plugin's main settings page in the global settings. So let's go ahead and check out where those are located. Right over here, if you head over to the global settings, and you scroll down to default settings for advanced responsive grid sizes, you'll see all of those breakpoint numbers are set right here so they can be adjusted and just click update and that will adjust these breakpoint numbers right here. So let's go ahead and save the slider and test that. 
So if we resize here on the front end, let's just bring this all the way back up to full width. And here we can see that the font size should be 36 pixels, which is the same as we've set here in the editor. So let's resize the window and let's watch this text resize and how it bounces back up to 100% as we hit that 1024 number and the other breakpoints, 778 and 480. So let's go ahead and resize the window here and just watch that text resize down. As we hit that 1024, we should see it bounce back up. There we go, bounced right back up to 100%. See that? And as we resize down again, once we hit that other breakpoint, here it goes, bounces right back up to 100%. And as we resize down one more time, about 480 for our mobile view should bounce right back up to 100%. So there's a few things going on now that we've applied these custom grid sizes. The first is we've introduced the ability to resize the text dynamically based on the different breakpoints. And the second thing is that we've introduced the ability to display the slider in different ways based on the viewport. And this is done from the layer grid size right here. So the layer grid size for the original desktop view was 1240 by 500 pixels. But for the mobile view, it's set to 480 by 720. So a slider with this type of shape would be much better for a smartphone. Whereas if we resize the window here back up to desktop view, this is much better for a web page presentation viewed on a desktop computer. And then as the slider's real estate changes, this presents the opportunity for us to not only display our content in different sizes, but maybe also introduce additional content and maybe position it in different places based on the different viewport. And this is something that we're going to explore in the next video in the series. And as a primer, let's just go ahead and take a look at how this is done. So now that we've applied these custom grid sizes here, if we head over to the slide editor and just reload the page here, we're going to see these new viewport options toward the top right. And if we click these different viewport options, we're going to see that our canvas editing area here now resizes to whatever the layers grid size is that we've set over in the slider settings for that custom grid size. So the viewport for our mobile layer grid size here is 480 by 720. And if we switch over to the mobile viewport in our slide editor, we can see it's also the same size. And so what we're going to talk about in the next video is how we can change not only the size of the text, but the color and also the position based on these different viewports. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.